right. <clears throat> Here we are. <clears throat> Morning time and uh, just got this net glued up. And uh, I got five C clamps here, and uh, I'll explain a little bit of what, about what I did here. Uh, this is one of my I next my next that I've glued a rosewood fingerboard on, and um, it's kind of tricky because when I when I glue the fingerboard on, it's kind of floating on glue on both both the fingerboard and the uh, maple blank. And uh, so it want to shift, it want to move, it wants to move like this. And so what I do is I draw lines on this, it's pre-shaped fingerboard. So I flush it up here and I have a line up here in the front, lines on the side, and that's what keeps the fingerboard in place. Uh, let me take it apart and I can show you a little more about what I've done here. So get these C clamps off. It really doesn't matter what size of uh, C clamps you use, but uh, I think the most important thing is the surface area that's clamping down on the fingerboard. The, the clamps are not really tightened that, that much uh, because you don't want to damage your glue board. But uh, anyway, here's the neck. And here's the fingerboard. Here's the truss rod. Let's see if we can get a close-up of the truss rod. And uh, there's the neck there. But typically, you know, uh, I use uh, dimensions of three quarter inch on the maple back and a quarter inch thick on the rosewood fingerboard. It's radius to about a sixteenth, sixteenth inch radius. This neck happens to be 21, 21 frets. This right here is the um, glue block that I use. I don't know if you can see it. But it has a uh, radius underneath, and that allows these two edges to sit on the fingerboard and put pressure downwards. So, um, the type of glue, glue that I use is just a, a tight bond wood, wood glue, and uh, you want to be careful not to get glue on the surface here because when you put when you put your glue block on, then you can ultimately glue it to the fingerboard. This glue board is it's, it's pretty thick. It's about an inch thick, so it won't flex, and it's pretty straight. I don't know if you can see that. Let's see how right. Yeah, it's pretty straight, and it's also tapered. It's narrower here and it's wider down here to accommodate the width of the nut area and the back end and it's also not quite the full length of the fingerboard so um, <clears throat> this is my laminated laminated maple you've got one two three that's uh, one inch pieces that are laminated in a blank first but uh, typically what I do is I use Underneath the fingerboard, there's a slot, truss rod slot, and uh, I, on this particular neck, I put the truss rod adjustment in the base of the neck, and uh, it's a two-way adjustable truss rod. I really like those because they give you they give you a flexibility. Like, um, let's see, I can explain it to you this way. If this was the if this was the neck, what it'll do is that truss rod will flex it up. And it'll flex it down, giving you two ways to adjust. Sometimes, when you if you don't adequate, adequately um, affix your your maple, you might have a slight overbow when you glue the fingerboard on, and so in that event, you'll have to kick it down with a truss rod, or 
if the neck is under bowed, then you kick it in the opposite direction, up like this. So that's how this truss rod works in there. Let me let me get one for you and I can show you. These are the truss rods I use. I get them from a supplier and uh, they adjust on this end and they're held on this end. And as you can see there's two rods and uh, let me see if I can uh, adjust it for you. Okay, where's my Allen wrench? Ah, uh, here we are, right in front of me. But anyway, let me show you if if I turn if I turn the truss rod clockwise. Oh, hello. You can see. Ah. You can see um, the overbow. Yeah, right there. You can see how it's it's going over like this. That's for one adjustment. That's counter. That's clockwise. And if I counterclockwise, it'll do the opposite of that. Now, if you look closely, you can see that it there we go. It it underboat. So that's one of the reasons why I use these truss rods for for that fact. Um, you got brass ends on them. It's all made out of welded steel. These rods, I don't know, they look like they're about three, three sixteenths or maybe close to a quarter. But they're covered, encased in a sleeve, plastic sleeve, so glue won't stick on and uh, uh, get in, uh, in the way of how this truss rod would operate. But that's what's under here, like so. There's a, approximately a quarter inch channel. The, uh, the width of the, the height of the truss rod inside the back of this neck. It's been routed out. So what I'll do then is uh, I cut some I cut some small pieces of foam like so, and I end up with these little small pieces which go in between the sandwich between the truss rod and the fingerboard underneath. I put one here and I put one here. And that holds the truss rod in place. I apply glue on the back of the fingerboard. Uh, I'm not going to say generously, but enough to where the whole back surface is wet. And same with the maple part of the neck. And then I sandwich them together. And like I say, it wants to, it wants to move. When I put the fingerboard on, because it's wet, it wants to move like this. So. Prior to gluing, I drew a pin line here and here. Let's see if we can see if we can see that. I'm not sure if you can see that. Let's get it. Yeah, maybe you can see it a little bit. You can see the pin line on either side. And we got a shadow there. But anyway, it's there. And that's what helps me guide the fingerprint on after I place on the block. And then I put the C clamps. I put about five or six of them here. And uh, then it's just drying overnight. <clears throat> overnight drying is what I usually uh, do for all my um, uh, gluing. So anyway, that's pretty much uh, a, a release of clamp and, and a, a, just a basic process of how fingerboards are glued on. Um, I forgot to say hello. Well, good morning, everybody. Uh, welcome to my channel. If you are interested in guitar building and fabrication and customizing, etc., etc., by all means, check out my, uh, subscribe to my channel. Please, subscribe to my channel, go on YouTube, and look up my name. It's Carl Sandoval, and it'll direct you there. Sometimes when I post my videos, I won't put a, a link. So, um, if you subscribe to my, my channel, you'll be able to get directly to my videos. I'll try and post as many as I can, as often as I can. And uh, please, if you uh, 
feel within your heart that you really enjoy my efforts and labor and experiences and showing you guitar fabrication and repairing, by all means, uh, send a donation. Uh, I'll accept all gifts. Uh, it's financial support that I use to uh, keep this channel going and will keep it going. All these supplies that you see here, we got glue, we got tape, several types of tape. We got tools, measuring devices, accessories like press rods, allen wrenches. I've got all these uh, chisel screwdrivers, uh, measuring devices. Uh, this is a Dremel. Uh, all these up here, you know, I mean, I've got, it, it costs a lot to get all this going. And, uh, you know, uh, there may be some beliefs that I make a lot of money out there, but I don't. You know, I just, I just created a job for myself, but I really love what I do. And like I say, if you want to keep these, this channel going and keep me uh, uh, sustaining these videos, then by all means, send a donation, send a gift. You can contact me at my email at carl at carlsandoval.com. That's with the letter K, all lowercase. carl at carlsandoval.com. Uh, PayPal is a good way to, to make a donation as a gift. I really appreciate it if you do. Thank you with all my heart, and uh, until next time, God bless and take care.